This is a short video on renal tubule acidosis, which is a series of disorders in which there's acidification of the body due to the inability of the kidneys to acidify urine. Now, before we start talking about the four types of RTA, renal tubule acidosis, we're going to go over this simple picture of a nephron here. We start with the glomerulus, which I'm outlining right here, which leads into the proximal convoluted tubule, down into the loop Henle, down into the medulla, up back into the cortex, we have a distal convoluted tubule, and then down into the collecting duct, collects into the ureter, goes through the urethra, and out as urine. Now, of the four types of renal tubule acidosis, they, some of them occur in different parts of the nephron. We know that types one and types four both occur in the distal convoluted tubule, whereas type two occurs in the proximal convoluted tubule, and we've kind of labeled those on the nephron there. Type 3 is actually a condition where there's combined type 1 and type 2, so that one would show symptoms related to both the distal and the proximal tubule. Let's talk more about type 1 distal tubule RTA. Distal tubule RTA is related to the failure of the alpha intercalated cells in the distal convoluted tubule to secrete acid. Um, there are a series of cells in the distal convoluted tubule called alpha intercalated cells whose job is to pump out H ions, and when they can't do that, sometimes referred to as distal tubule RTA. So if you can't acidify the urine, you're going to have a hard time making the urine pH low. So with type 1 RTA, we see a urine pH larger than 6. There's also decreased hydrogen ions in the tubular lumen. So this is going to cause the K ions, the potassium ions, to be drawn out toward the negative charge of that lumen. <coughs> Type 1 distal tubule RTA is associated with Shrogan syndrome, which is the production of autoantibodies against carbonic anhydrase 2. Carbonic anhydrase 2 is an enzyme responsible for generating hydrogen ions in the distal convoluted tubule. So it makes sense that one of the disorders causing the inability of the alpha intercalated cells to produce hydrogen ions might be an autoantibody against the enzyme that generates the hydrogen ions. It's also related to calcium phosphate kidney stones. These kidney stones are formed by decreased citrate excretion. Citrate is usually responsible for keeping calcium and phosphate from precipitating together. And hypercalciuria, so high calcium content in the urine, also causes the formation of kidney stones. Salts are also more likely to precipitate at higher pHs. And since urine pH is relatively high in type 1 RTA, that can happen here. Type 2 is called proximal tubule RTA. It's caused by the failure of the proximal tubule to resorb filtered bicarb. So right after the GFR, sorry, excuse me, right after the glomerulus filters a bunch of the plasma, a lot of that material goes back into the bloodstream through the proximal tubule. When the proximal tubule fails to filter bicarbonate specifically, it might be a proximal tubule RTA. Now the urine pH changes a little bit with type 2 RTA. First, we have an initial insult where there's excess bicarb excretion. Right after bicarb cannot, can no longer be reabsorbed, the urine pH is very high because there's bicarb, the conjugate base, that's going to increase the urine pH. Over time, the bicarb serum levels are going to drop, everything's going to stabilize, we're going to reach a steady state, and the impaired absorption is again sufficient to acidify the urine back to what is, what is more normal, about 5.5 or lower. The distal nephron, in this case, after the insult, can still function normally and can still acidify the urine. Sodium bicarbonate loss can lead to hypoaldosteronism in type 2 RTA, which can produce a mild hypokalemia. So both types 1 and types 2 show hypokalemia. Some other associated defects related to type 2 RTA include the findings of urine, or excuse me, uric acid, glucose, phosphate, and amino acid, all in the urine. This is referred to as Fanconi syndrome. And another important association with type 2 RTA is the demineralization of bone. This is due to phosphate excretion. This is also this type, this RTA, type 2, is also related to multiple myeloma. 
Now, type three is a com is a combination of both types one and type two. Patients with type three usually have features and symptoms of both distal and proximal RTA. This type three is also relatively rare and is rarely discussed. So we're not gonna go into it any more than that. And finally, we have hyperkalemia RTA, <clears throat> also referred to as hyperkalemic RTA. This is type four. This is essentially caused by various things, but all relating to decreased aldosterone release or activity. So either you're not making enough aldosterone, you're not releasing it, or it's not able to act where it, uh, where it is supposed to act in the distal convoluted tubule. So hyperkalemic RTA type 4 is hypoaldosteronism. Hypoaldosteronism, of course, causes decreased ENAC activity in the distal tubule. This is a channel on the apical membrane of the distal tubule, the epithelial sodium channel, and there's decreased activity of this channel with low aldosterone. This results in the tubular lumen being less negative, which of course results in less excretion of potassium and hydrogen. So this is of course gonna make the person hyperkalemic and acidotic. If you cannot secrete potassium, you're hyperkalemic. If you cannot secrete H, or hydrogen ions, you're acidotic. <clears throat> Acidosis in these principal cells that usually secrete hydrogen ions also prevents ammonia genesis. If you can't make ammonia, NH3, you're not going to be able to carry hydrogen ions on ammonia through the urine. Ammonia is responsible for carrying about half of the hydrogen ions in the urine. And if you can't make it, there's going to be free floating hydrogen ions, and thus that's going to lower the pH of the urine in type 4 RTA. And here is just a small summary table of the four types, really three types, um, with one combination and, uh, and a couple important facts, including serum pH, some urine pH, and some associated disorders that might be important to remember. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.